Hey guys. <laughs> so, we're going to do a little bit of Arcadia Quest. So, Arcadia Quest has been probably my favorite game for a long, long time. Um, you know, we've been playing Gloomhaven for a while and uh, we're still playing our Gloomhaven campaign, but um, I have recently started up another campaign with some other people and we're going back to Arcadia Quest. Now this particular one is the first Arcadia Quest. Uh, I've got many Arcadia Quests. I've got this, I've got um, the dragons, I've got the Kickstarter stuff, I've got Inferno, I've got uh, the Pets expansion, I've got uh, a whole lot of lava, uh, the grave, you know, like there's a whole bunch of them. And it's cool because when it comes to playing Arcadia Quest, each of them have, you know, a different whole campaign that you can do. And you have choices of where you want to go. So it kind of has that you know choose your own adventure kind of thing in a way you know because depending on the places that you went to the first time and the second time will also determine where you're going to go or where you can go or what you've unlocked to go in other places after it's hard to explain how that works but basically each time that you play the game or each scenario that you play is like playing a level and uh, every time that you play a level, the next time you play, you gain, um, you know, new gear and new abilities and stuff like that as you keep progressing on and as the monsters and stuff you fight become more difficult and stuff like that as well. When it comes to the game, there's a whole whack load of heroes for you to choose from. It's very, very cool. Um, and, you know, having all of the games really kind of makes it interesting too because you can use any of the characters in any one of the games. There's even another side game called Mesmora, right, that uh, has its own characters. And it's a kind of different game altogether, but it's in the era of, of Arcadia. And,. With Mesmora, their characters are still completely compatible to use in any of the, of the Arcadia quests. As well as there's even a kit that you can get, which I have, that you can use any of the Arcadia stuff from anything in Mesmora as well. Which is pretty cool. Uh, if you watch, watch it played um, about how to play Arcadia. You know, they can explain it. He explains it really, really well on how to play the game. And then he plays an actual game through with uh, Luke. And um, they actually, they made a, a character, Luke the Lucky from Esmora, um, after Luke. And it's just kind of neat. So, you know, go check out their channel. Uh, it would explain on how the game actually functions. And it's, uh, it's very well put together. It's a PvP where you're playing against player versus player, but it's also a player versus environment as well. There's, you know, objectives that you have to achieve by beating certain things or gaining certain things or getting certain things throughout the game. Um, but then there's also um, attacking your opponents as well, which is adds a whole other element. Everybody has like a team of three, and it just goes on and on. So check them out, and it'll explain how the game works. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna paint them. <laughs> so the first one, and you know, I'll mention too, there is a lot of the guys I have already painted. Um, if you go to basicpainter.com, you know, I, I just through a simple web page up, all it is is basically you can go and you can see some of the stuff I've already painted. And there's a lot of the guys from Arcadia Quest Inferno and also from the Pets expansion. I've completely painted all of them. Um, and I've got a lot of the photos up there if you want to look at them. I mean, otherwise, I might do a short little video just showing all of those components to those ones afterwards to 
so you can see, you know, um, how I painted them. Um, what we're gonna paint here today, this is the guy right here, with, and they're cute little cartoony guys. You know, pretty cool, and it makes it fun to paint because the detail is kind of there, but uh, it, it's not like painting rising sun detail. You know, you can get away with a little bit more flat in the colors. You know, so still a lot of fun to paint. That's the wisp. So moving forward, why don't we just uh, just get a whole? Let's just go and paint right away. Pretty simple. White hair, a little bit gray as it moves on. Get kind of like a gray suit and some purple and black. More like metal. Just over the belt buckle there. White eyebrows. Pink face. Right, let's start with the face. There you go. Skin tone. Again, I kind of like using, sometimes I like using the uh, air, um, you know, just because it's already fairly, you know, uh, liquefied. You know, just one little drop, like that's all I need. I don't feel like airbrushing them. Well, I could do that maybe for his hood and everything. That might not be that bad. should actually do some black for his eyes first, but I just want to see how this is going to look on his face. Yeah, I think that that's going to look pretty good actually. So, it's still pretty bright. All right. Now, something else I picked up recently. Some contrast, black, Templar. Contrast is nice. This stuff is already very liquidy. Um, actually works really well. I really, really like this stuff. A lot of people have already been switching to just using contrast for everything. I don't know if I'll do that, but you know, see, just to get it in there. That wasn't bad. like this I got my that's better So it's time to try this contrast white. Um, yeah, it's kind of more of a gray. <laughs> if, you, 
I mean, really boil it down to, you know, it's it's gray. It's not it's not white, but whatever. Off white, I guess, or whatever that name is. Uh, apothecary white, but anyway. So I'm gonna do a few layers and then add matte white so that when you look at the picture of them you can see it's kind of like a bright white at the front of them and it kind of goes off to a bit of a gray at the back so I'm gonna try to simulate that kind of same thing now I'm putting this on while it's still wet too so it blends you know in with that contrast white that I just used and you know hopefully it's a little bit more seamless opposed to hey here's white and now it's gray so not too bad I think that looks alright so I got the black in his eyes, I get the black around for his little mask there. Now, I also added in the white into his eyes at the same time while I had the matte white out. And then I just put his pupils in, so he looks pretty awesome. Urgh, look at that. <laughs> so, not bad. They got a lot of character to them, these little guys. It's pretty neat. Some of them, if you look at them really closely, they tend to resemble some form of uh, character you may have seen from a movie, right? But of course, they they don't name it the same and everything, you know. But if you <laughs> if you really look at it, a lot of times that's the way it is. Um, here again, I'm back to just the contrast black, and I'm just putting a layer of it down on the inside of his cape because the inside is going to be darker than the outside. And I'm still going to give it a coat of like a purple over top of that. Just so that there's that distinguishable, you know, here's the inside, here's the outside of his cape. They've got kind of a rough texture to this too. So it kind of comes through and uh, it looks kind of nice. It's, it's neat. Let's see right there. Um, the contrast is really nice because of the fact that it's so thin that it really doesn't rob you of any of the detail that's been put into the character by the knife or by the sculptor or who, you know, whoever, you know, designed this guy. So also when it comes to some of his costume or whatever it is he's wearing, uh, it's kind of black as well. So I'm just doing a kind of a quick coat of that, but I might actually just go to a regular uh, black for his uh, clothing so that it's just a really nice, thick, dark black just like you see in the picture. Now here, like I said, with the purple, or well, this is the Nagra Knight. Just doing up the cape. And I'm also going to do his boots and his little gauntlets and all that kind of stuff in it as well, uh, which I'm going to go over with a kind of a, a silvery metallic on top of that uh, so that his armor kind of goes with it. You'll see that slight tinge of the same color in it as well. So here I am just kind of coating all of that in, his boots and everything else too. I think he's going to look pretty good. So there I've gone over the gauntlets and his boots and stuff with that silvery bit of silver so you can still see a bit of the blue through it or that, uh, that, well, that purplish kind of color. So now we've got a lot of the base done. Just have this here little pouch on his side and his two little swords. Maybe a couple of touch-ups to do. Maybe some dry brushing. So, the next thing I think we're going to tackle is use a gray. And we're going to start putting the base down for that little pouch he has on his side there. 
that time. There we go. Now I'm just going to use some. Um, Rhinox Hide. I'm going to use this for his swords. And that I'm going to base down for that as well. So now I'm going to go back after this and I think we're going to start tackling the base and I'll look back and see what we can do with the rest of the character after. He's looking pretty good so far so I'm going to go back to just using that same black again and you see I'm going to do this pattern, uh, this cobblestone pattern on the base. Uh, that's just because when you play the first Arcadia quest, um, all of the game uh, the game board is all co cobblestone like this. So we're gonna kind of make it match. First stones up, stone gold. So this part is a little bit timely because uh, doing the base is going to require a bunch of different little colors and actually doing a little bit of some blending too because really it's kind of like just some browns and a little bit of yellow and uh, some different shades of gray. So over the course here you're going to see the gray that I just used and then you're also going to see there's some yellow. Right. And there is a couple of dark or yellow spots, so I just stuck with it and left that nice and vibrant. But then see here, I took some matte white, mixed it in, and now I've got some more paler yellow I'm putting in there as well. Right. Just to kind of you know, keep it somewhat like the stones that they have on uh, the playboards. You know, so coming up here now, we're going to mix in, mix in another color. And we're going to use a little bit of some Death Claw Brown. And we're going to mix some white with it. Just to, again, lighten it up. So you can see the stones are starting to kind of come out there now. And it's going to be interesting. Because basically you'll be able to tell which characters are from the original Arcadia quest. Uh, and identify them by the base because the base is going to be pretty much like this for each one of the characters so that you understand which ones they belong to. So a little bit of some arid earth. This is kind of a, a nice light pale kind of color as well. I'm going to add that in. And this character is starting to get close to being finished here. Uh, not too much left couple more to fill in for the base and the base will be pretty much done. I think that looks pretty good. I, I kind of didn't want to go too pale but I didn't want to go too rich though either. So just going to add a little bit of a banshee brown. This is kind of a light middle ground brown as well just to fill in the last couple of ones here. And then the base will be pretty much finished. So after that there's not much left to do other than to go over the character take a look see if there's anything that I missed. Uh, I still have a little bit of silver I think to do in highlighting his armor and uh, you know, and then we'll be pretty much there. So here we're going to take that silver and now we're going to highlight the rest of his armor. Now I'm using uh, from War Paints. Uh, it's a metallic silver that they have. And I, I like this silver. It's a, it's a nice highlight. So here I'm bringing out like his belt buckles and stuff, um, you know, to be <clears throat> so you can see him. And then uh, along the edges of his armor, just you know, leaving the armor still as it is, but just to kind of highlight it a bit. I think he 
actually starting to look pretty sharp. So this guy is going to be the first official character completed for Arcadia Quest, the, the first uh, box. So I'm kind of pumped about that. You know, I, like I said, I've gotten all of Inferno done and I've gotten a lot of other ones done. So this is the first one for this box. So now that I've got that silver pretty much done, he's looking pretty sharp there. It's going to be uh, pretty much down to... Okay, there's a couple of spots I can see that I missed, so I'm going to get those, clean it up, make sure he, that everything is taken care of. And there I missed, you know, on his shoulder blade there. Still got some other spots in silver to do. Now you really have to kind of look around and find, okay, what have I not done yet? Oh, that still has to be done. Oh, I missed a spot there. Oh, I missed a spot of black there. You know, when you start getting more of the guy covered, you start to realize little places you've missed. And then, of course, places you can kind of tidy up or, you know, straighten up or make or improve. So now here, same thing, Rhinox Hide. We've already used this, but I'm just going to use this to actually make rope and there I missed a spot down there for his blade there's the black that I missed on his leg so just fine-tuning do one more quick over so there's a little bit rubbed off in the end of his cape there all right so, now, on to the shades. Now, the Nuln oil I picked for this because he's got black armor. And it just made sense because that's probably just going to fill in any little cracks that I might have missed too. Or that are hard to get to. Because I'm putting it on pretty generously. And then I'm also going to use the earth shade as well because the earth shade is going to add that kind of dirtiness to his pouch right there as well as it's going to bring out all the detail so that works out too and that's pretty much it he is done so last step gotta shine him up i will just take a little bit of that and we add that to his armor and i think he's going to be looking pretty sharp So as I'm just finishing them off, just a quick reminder, if you like what you've been watching, please like and subscribe. Uh, subscribers would be fantastic. You know, and uh, leave comments too. You know, if there's anything that you'd like to see me do or try or, you know, you just want to share an opinion on something, you know, whatever the case may be, leave them there. I uh, can pretty much respond to anything because I don't have a whole lot of subscribers. So <laughs> um, I'm also on Facebook and I do have uh, basicpainter.com too if you want to check out again the other uh, things that I've painted for Arcadia Quest. There's some stuff there for Deep Madness and some other stuff for Super Dungeon Explorer as well. But otherwise, um, that is pretty much it for the Wisp. There he is. Shine up that silver there a little. So I'm going to continue to do a few more um, of the Arcadia Quest uh, characters. I might throw another Gloomhaven in there soon too, but um, you know I want to get all of the characters at least we're using for this new campaign painted. Kind of keep everyone in the game and keeps it fun too as they keep getting painted along the way. And. Uh, I think the guy that's playing and using this in his guild right now, he's going to be pretty pumped. Because he's going to have the first painted character. There he is. The Wisp. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Until next time, we'll see you on the next video. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh.